Far be it from me to turn the diatribe into a five-minute pitch for our new podcast, D&D Minus, available now wherever you get your podcasts or just follow the link in the show notes. But damn it, I'm playing D&D with my friends again, and it's been a long fucking time. See, I grew up in the 80s, so of fucking course I played D&D as a kid. Of course, I, I played the kid version, right, where you spend half the time arguing with a DM about the rules and harumphily refusing to slay the dragon until everybody admits that your idea was pretty cool, even if it's not going to work. Uh, So exactly the same thing we're doing on the new podcast, actually. But if you grew up in the 80s and you're listening to this show, there's a good chance that you missed out on that part of your era. I know fully half of my friends did because the 80s, you see, were the height of the satanic panic as well. And Dungeons and Dragons was, for whatever weird fucking reason, the cultural emblem of that particular mass delusion. Adults would straight-facedly tell you that when you played Dungeons & Dragons, you risked summoning real demons. Now, first of all, this is terrible marketing if you don't want kids to play D&D because, you know, I conjured the shit out of some demons. That would have been so fucking metal. But also, if you've ever actually played Dungeons & Dragons, you know, whatever idiot tells you that basically ruins his religion for you for the rest of your life. Like, grown-ass men would tell me that this endeavor, this game, they largely consisted of arguing with my brother about whether laying down a distraction fart should count as athletics or deception is the gateway to the demonic realm. How the fuck was I ever supposed to take anything an adult ever said seriously for the rest of my goddamn life? Of course, not every kid had the freedom of thought I did, and I knew that good and well because, you know, when you asked your friends, hey, you want to play D&D, you generally got either a yes or an attempt to ward off the hex that you had just placed upon them. I mean, I was never the cool kid. Nobody really wanted to play shit with me. So, you know, when I tossed out the invite, kids didn't harumphly explain that, no, I'd love to, but my parents wouldn't let me. They they, they just, they bought into this shit, right? They, They told me that I'd become the unwitting recruiter for the desolate one and that I was putting their very mortal souls in peril by asking them. And that meant that not only did they not accept my D&D invite, by the way, that also meant they didn't want to sit with me at lunch or pick me for dodgeball anymore either. And why would they? I was of the devil at this point. It didn't even matter if I thought I had the best intentions because the intentions I had were not my own. Now, later in my childhood, my taste in music, movies, and T-shirts would confirm this suspicion of theirs, of course. So unbeknownst to me, the D&D thing actually was practiced for an ongoing theme of my childhood. But as best as I can remember, this would have been my first experience with religious division. This would have been the first time I wasn't allowed to hang out with a kid because I didn't share the same religious beliefs as he did. There were times that I couldn't go to a thing with my friend because, like, it was religious. Right, like my buddy was in some Catholic version of Boy Scouts and I wanted to go, but I couldn't. Neighbor invited me and my brother to a religious camp. My mom wouldn't let us go, that kind of stuff. But this was the first time religion stepped out into the secular world to shit on my childhood. I mean, I'd be putting way too much of an onus on this if I said that, like, that's what led me to be an anti-religious activist, but it wouldn't exactly be inaccurate. You know, it certainly wasn't this one thing. It's not like I got turned down four times for D&D then cut my palm as I swore vengeance against Jesus. But if we took all the straws off that broken-ass camel and examined them, they'd all more or less look the same, and this one would be in there somewhere. Sure, the stupidity of labeling polyhedral dice and elf lore a gateway drug to human sacrifice was a big part of it, but so is the divisiveness. Even as a kid, I could see that the primary thing religion did in the end was divide people up. It created us's and them's. I recognize that when they called Dungeons and Dragons satanic, they weren't demonizing the game. They were demonizing me. They were demonizing all the kids who played the game in the eyes of all the kids they were talking to. They were creating a visible enemy to represent their invisible enemy because it's harder to fear something that you never see. So if you were one of those victims, one of those thousands upon thousands of kids that were denied the joy of waiting for the DM to look up how many hit points a stench cow has, you owe it to yourself to subscribe to D&D Minus. Take back the childhood that Christianity stole from you. Listen to Morgan try to steal random shit for no reason. Listen to Eli patiently explain to Heath that he can't just keep rolling until he gets the number he wants. Listen to Anna lose patience with Heath way before Eli does. But most importantly, check and see if it invites Satan into your soul. Run the experiment because, worst case scenario... I'm pretty sure you get a lot of carnal pleasures between now and the damnation.